Hey, I'm Chris. And I'm Sharif. We're Technomadia. And we have been on the road a really long time and using apps almost the entire time. Well, apps kind of came out a couple years after we hit the road. No, no, because we started off with Treos and we had travel apps. That's right. We did. We've been using apps the entire time we've been on the road, even pre-iPhone. <laughs> and we're also app developers. So <laughs> we've developed a few of these apps, but we wanted to share with you today, especially after we're wrapping up a six week road trip in the RV, is updating the apps that we find the most useful in our RV travels. Now, we are a little bit biased because we wrote three of the apps on this list, but we've got a great list here of <laughs> apps that we find very, very useful. All right, so first category of apps is finding campgrounds and places to overnight at. Okay. Um, we all, there's a bunch of apps out there. But the ones that we find most useful, I think the number one would be All Stays. It has been around for I think eight years now and it is continuously updated. It has so much information. It is a ridiculously useful tool. Probably about the best $10 you could spend. It is a pricey one and I think it's only available on Apple products now, no longer on Android. But uh, it is highly useful. Uh, they also have a great website to go along with it. But they list everything from campgrounds, overnight stays, Elks place, clubs, uh, places to get fuel, Walmarts. Um, service centers, dump stations, so it's kind of like all the apps rolled into one. And low clearances even. I mean, they have got so much information and a great interface. So all stays, number one app to get. All right. As far as finding other campgrounds, um, we loved Campendium's review site and they just launched their own app uh, earlier, since we were back on the road anyway. Yeah. So it's somewhat In new. last year, yeah. And uh, we found their app really great because we like the way Campendium organizes their campgrounds and we like the reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, then Harvest Hosts. We're a big fan of Harvest Hosts and one of the things we didn't like in the past was you had to go through their website to try and track down Harvest Host uh, locations along your route, but now they have an app and it is so much easier. So it makes it great to find those unique overnight stays at wineries, breweries, farms, museums, and places yeah. like that. You do need to be a member of Harvest Host, of course, to use the app. Yeah. Um, Let's see, if we're looking for uh, just an overnight stay at a full hookup campground, we'll check Passport America's app yep. to see what's around us and the, on our route. The 50% discount makes it really fabulous for just a quick night, dump the tank, stuff like that. And uh, it's, you know, sometimes it's hardly, it's actually cheaper than staying at a Walmart because Walmart always charges us about $100 for the groceries. <laughs> well, we get groceries out of it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Ultimate Campgrounds is a great resource that is Focus only on public campgrounds, so state parks, Army Corps of Engineers, federal, the types of places that we enjoy staying. So we check them as well. well one of our apps, uh, two of our apps here, is Coverage is our app for finding cell phone, um, knowing where you might find cell phone signal on the road. Um, it's, it kind of overlays the ca carrier's coverage maps from all the four different carriers, and you can build your own custom coverage map to scout coverage up ahead. So if we know we're going someplace that might be a little remote before we book it or head out there, we will check to first to make sure what the odds are of us getting online right. because no, that's always critical yeah, for no us. No guarantees, but it's a really good start. Uh, U.S. Public Lands is another app that we created. Uh, all of these other ones track known boondocking locations. Sometimes we like to find the lesser known boondocking <laughs> locations. So this is one tool that we wrote to help us look for where there's BLM and National Forest Land. Right. So it just takes the U.S. National Atlas and takes it in an offline pocket, pocketable format for iPhone and Android. So you can look up, um, you know, where the, the Corps of Engineer land or the BLM land or land like that is and just get a rough idea who owns the land around you. Really handy out west. And then when uh, we have kind of decided where we might be going and we're getting down to maybe booking a specific site, uh, we'll use Google Earth and or, or satellite from Apple Maps or Google Maps to kind of zoom in and see the campsite and what it actually looks like. Yeah, particularly I, I like using uh, Google Earth's uh, 3D modes um, to get a real look at the terrain, sometimes scout out the roads and approaches. And you can also drop down into Google Street View and even get a street level view of potential low clearances or um, steep grades. All right. So we've picked where we're going. Yes. Now, how are we getting there? <laughs> Obviously, we're navigation. driving the bus, navigation so navigating apps. to get there. Um, our bus is narrow, uh, it's only 96 inches wide, and we're only 11 and a half feet tall. We've also been on the road long enough to know that yes, low clearances and tight spots do happen, but not often enough that we stress about it. Right, so we, we do, when we're in the Northeast, we stress about it a little bit more and we will do a little bit more homework, but in general, other than the Northeast, we don't really get too, too crazy about looking for low clearances in advance. <laughs> so we don't use a specific RV app for navigating. We just use Apple Maps and Google Maps as our primary navigation. Yes, and we actually run them both 
and then they kind of, uh, um, if they agree, we feel good about it. And if they disagree, that's when we start to do other research and we run them underway. So they're kind of arguing with each other. Uh, we do have an RV GPS unit from Garmin that we keep that we also run. He mainly has it up while he's driving so that he can see what's coming up. Yeah. And that one will take into account low clearance bridges and things like that. And if that one disagrees with Apple and Google, we'll investigate further. Right, then Sheree, I'm like, Sheree, I need a tiebreaker vote. Get in here. <laughs> and when we are uh, going through areas that we know there's going to be steep grades and maybe even weather problems up ahead, we use a, a app called InRoute. Yeah, in, InRoute is a really great uh, navigation and planning app that actually lets you see the road grades, lets you see how curvy the roads are up ahead of you, and kind of do your more advanced plotting in advance on an app. And it's, it's really handy. It can even then tell you the weather forecast as you, as you travel by the mile. Does. All right, so in route as well. I mean, not the app, the <laughs> actual action of being in route. Um, we use uh, Gas Buddy for finding uh, fuel stations along the way. Diesel, um, yes. Uh, we will look on those to see if they're bus friendly. We typically find that most consumer fuel stations we can get our bus in and out of, even yeah. while towing the Mini it, without it, too we, much We problem. might try and have like three or four lined up though, because if, if it looks kind of tricky, then we just go on to the next one. We don't get too hung up on a single spot. And that's one of the advantages of having a huge fuel tank, so we <laughs> don't have to stress about it. Uh, we also run an app called State Lines. It tracks state laws that change as you cross state lines. So can you buy beer in the grocery store? Or, or in particular, is the alcohol tax going to be a lot ch cheaper or before you cross the state line, so should you stock up on wine and spirits now or the next day? <laughs> makes it sound like it's all alcohol focused. <laughs> That's it what inspired tracks, it. <laughs> it also tracks fuel tax rates and yes. sales tax rates and, and uh, state park rules, if you can overnight in the, the rest stops in that state. So a bunch, there's about 50 different state laws that it tracks. So uh, cell phone laws, I mean, it's never smart yeah. to talk on your cell phone <laughs> anyway. But yeah, it's good to know the laws and overnight rest areas in particular can be very handy mm -hmm. to know. Uh, we also will use the Allstays app again to find things in route, uh, clearance, low clearance spots, grades, and things like that, as well as fuel stations, uh, service centers, and things like that we might need. Cat, stations cat being... trying to tip over mm -hmm. tripod, sorry. <laughs> and then uh, I use an app called Road Trip to track our fuel, uh, both in the Mini Cooper and in the bus. Uh, so every time we fill up, I update that, and we also keep our maintenance records in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, once we're here, once we've arrived, what do we do? First thing he does is uh, uses the uh, Apple Compass app to check the leveling. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but if you actually slide the compass to the side, you actually get a bubble level that is very handy and it's, it's quicker than any other tool I've used just to quickly check is the bus level because we have to level with boards. And we did buy that LevelMate Pro uh, system that the RV Geeks recommended. We honestly never got past the installation on it to set it up. <laughs> well, yeah, we got it set up, but then it was out of calibration and it was just so fast to use the Apple Compass app so that we've we never gone back. gone back to recalibrate it. <laughs> All right. <coughs> and the next thing we do is uh, we use the speed test app from Ookla, free app, to check what the speed is of our internet. Yeah, so we check all the different carriers because it's a lot more important to pay attention to speed than bars. You can have a one bar signal that's super fast and a five bar signal that's slow. So know your speeds. That lets us know if we're going to be able to stay long or not yes. because we have a lot of work we have to do online yep. like updating, uploading yep. these videos. Um, then we'll use apps for finding stuff around us like Yelp. Of course, everyone yep. uses that. Yep, that's where you find the nearest good barbecue place or a good restaurant we want to try. Um, I'm gluten free, so we also use an app called Find Me Gluten Free that helps us find maybe local local eateries and things that specialize in gluten free. And then uh, there's an app called a V for Wikipedia that is um, lets you look up Wikipedia entries on a map around you, and so it lets you learn the points of interest. I, I find learning the trivia and this, the history of the places we go to be fascinating. And the V app even has a little watch thing. So you could see right on your watch that you're a quarter mile away from some historic building or some historic site and maybe plan a trip to go see it. And of course, the other important thing while you're in a new location is paying attention to the weather. Um, so we use the storm app mainly to look to see what the weather is going to be like in the hyper local area. Yep. And a dark sky as well um, for, for the, if there's rain forecast. We use those on the boat as well. And then weather radio is, works just like a weather radio, except it always knows what your current location yep. is. So it's always updating to you what the local weather radio alerts are. Unlike one of the physical weather radios that you yep. have to go and program at each location and you always forget to do. Yep. And then there's a ton of other weather apps. If there's, uh, you know, things are getting exciting and we start just cross-referencing <coughs> among different apps to try and get a sense for what's going on. But those are our kind of go-to. 
All right, those are our favorite apps. We would love to hear what your favorite apps are for RVing. Maybe you'll introduce us to some new ideas or introduce some others to new ideas. So do leave a, uh, some comments and tell us what your favorite apps are. Cool. Happy traveling. Happy travels. Mm -hmm.